who is going to be available possibly around where the Warriors pick at number 19 and who is going to fit with what they need. Now, I'm not sure there's a young player who can fit because we saw this entire season what happened to all the young players. Kaminga, Moody, their minutes got yanked around. Wiseman so much so that they traded him. PBJ, did PBJ even play 35 games? I don't even I don't even know how many games he played. But uh, for for a team that is is old and and had a lot of tread on their tires, Steve Kirsch certainly did not trust the young players in in any way, and you know probably couldn't have trusted them based on some of the stuff that they did, but. We have a few weeks until the draft, and your first fit for where the Warriors are going to draft is Chris Murray, twin brother of Sacramento Kings, excellent rookie, Keegan Murray. Yeah. Um, You know, you talk about, you know, the Warriors are probably not going to draft another teenager because how we've seen them treat Kaminga and Moody in their first year, how we've seen them treat Wiseman, how we've seen them treat Patrick Baldwin Jr. and Ryan Rollins in their first year. All those guys spent a lot of time in Santa Cruz. I don't think they can afford to draft another guy who they expect to be in Santa Cruz. The reasoning for Chris Murray is he's like kind of the opposite of that. He's going to be like 23 when he plays his first game. He is older and he is ready to contribute right now. Um, He's a guy that, you know, I bet the Warriors probably could have used in this playoff run. A guy who can hit a wide open three uh confidently um he you know and another another point for for chris is how many uh how many twins can you think of that like i feel like twins are usually selected within a couple picks of each other there's not really a big talent gap between twins the ones that i can remember the league the ones that i can remember are the morris twins morris lopez the lopez thompson twins and well, the Thompson twins, yeah, for this year. Well, you talk, talk, and I'll see where where the Morris twins are drafted. They were like right after each other. So my point is that you know, uh, I, I I think that I think there is a gap between Chris and Keegan because I think Keegan has some on ball creation that I don't think Chris has. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like shooting, I can't imagine it's that far off. In terms of defense, defense, I can't imagine it's that far off. I'm sure they're similar athletes. Um, I just think it's more of the on-ball stuff. Chris didn't get as much of an opportunity to shine at Iowa uh, when Keegan was there. Keegan did a lot of the on-ball stuff, um, so Chris was kind of getting like a backup role. Uh, Keegan goes to the Kings. Chris gets that opportunity to shine, and he is averaging 20.2 points per game, 33.5% from three, which isn't great, but it was on high volume, 6.8 attempts, 7.9 rebounds per game, 1.2 blocks per game, um, you know, I just think that I think that this isn't a high ceiling swing. This is like a high floor swing who a guy on his first year of his rookie contract. I'm, I can't remember the number that's at, but I, I want, is that below a vet minimum or is that above a vet minimum for that first year of the rookie contract? Um, I guess that's not the most important thing, but I think it is important to have that like a low number for a guy who's going to contribute. Uh, yeah, that but, helps their, that helps their salary thing. Like yeah. the, the, what, the decision that they're going to have to make and where they then have to cut more is like when Kaminga, uh, you know, they're going to, they're going to have a Cause rookie has rookies have scaling contracts, first round picks at least. So. Yeah. So when, when, when Moody, I mean, Moody, when Kaminga gets to year uh, four and five, then that increases. And then he's got to, then they have his, his rights for, for the next contract. So that, yep. you know, that's why, winning now was important or winning last year was important because those contracts were not out of control at some point in the next two years Kaminga's contract uh, is probably going to be a concern because uh, same uh, and that that's that's what Jordan Poole was this year right yeah I think if they keep this pick it's gonna be a guy who they think can help right now um I think we're gonna do all these bri fits and I think they're gonna trade the pick (laughs) um (laughs) But yeah, I think and they the... traded though. Ooh, because the the current well, well the it current may, rule... it'd be, then make a selection and then trade it. I That's think probably you a can, way to no, get I, around I, it. I, I think you have to draft somebody. Yeah, draft you have someone. To draft the player, and then you can trade him. Yeah, but you cannot so, trade the pick. 
I think the, what's because most they're likely, trading next year's pick. If it the is the Stepian one, rule, the Stepian rule, whatever yeah, it's called, yeah. can't trade back to back picks. Yeah, uh, you can't not have two picks in two years, something like that. Um, but no, I think that's the argument. I think what's most likely going to happen is that let's say like a GG Jackson falls somehow falls and a team. I mean, I just, I think they're going to probably go best player available and draft it because that has the highest upside for a trade, a high ceiling pick had that, that pick has value. The guy who they draft has value. That's what I think will probably happen. But in the case that it doesn't, I think Chris Murray is, is potentially the pick here. Um, you know, just, just all my, just all my points is that he's ready to help now. And I just don't think twins can be that different in talent gap. And if the warriors had Keegan Murray right now, they'd be in the finals. Probably. What, what <laughs> is, what is his position on the warriors? So, yeah, I was trying to think of, of whose spot he's taking. And I think that there's a chance like that he takes, like, uh, he gets like some of what DiVincenzo's minutes were some of what DiVincenzo and GP two's minutes were because like obviously like if Kaminga stays on this team like I don't think you can afford to have Chris Murray take his minutes or else he's not on the team right like you need his main thing is like let me play so um I mean if we just talk about the guys who have a guaranteed roster spot for next season uh it's it's the starting lineup Steph Clay Wiggins Draymond Kevon Looney Jordan Poole if we're just going on who has who has a for sure spot for next year anyone could get traded but Jordan Poole Moses Moody GP2 Jonathan Kaminga, Ryan Rollins, and PBJ. Is that 10 guys? It's 11, I think. Yeah, so... Um, and they still don't have a backup center. Yeah, I think I think he's got a... So, mm. but, okay, so... What lineup possibility would you see him as a fit? Is he playing... I think he can play with Steph. Is he playing the power forward next to Draymond's center? Yeah, I think there's a chance he could. I think that could that could be a fun small ball lineup. Uh Steph Clay Wiggins, Chris Murray, Draymond. <laughs> that sounds weird to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's six eight, yeah. two twenty. He didn't rebound terrifically well, but he he averaged eight rebounds uh last year. That's pretty good. He's not the center. He's not the yeah. power forward on his Iowa team. Um, he bl- he actually blocked. Uh, he he had a 1.2 blocks, which is his high, upwards of a 0. 0.9 the year before. He actually shot the three ball much better the year before in in less minutes and less. It's shots. It's because I, I believe it's because he the year before he had a way less of a role. He didn't have to do as much on ball creation. He could just sit in a corner and shoot wide open threes. That I think that's that's the attraction for me. With this, with with Chris Murray on the Warriors, is that he has the op- opportunity to sit in the corner wide open and shoot threes. All right. So, um, how is does, does any is there any uh, information on defensively how he is? KOC thinks he's solid. Really? I think he's okay. I think he's probably a little worse than his brother because I don't think his brother's all that great. I think his brother's just pretty. He's pretty average, maybe a little above average. I think Chris will probably be average. So speaking of KOC, because we love to bring up KOC's mock draft, which is a, a really fun tool if you're interested in this stuff, if you just search for the Ringer uh, mock draft. Or the so, Ringer draft guide. Um, It's not even called the draft guide. Uh, oh, are you looking the at the mock draft? Because I look at the, I, I use the draft guide. Oh, you use the draft. Yeah, because he, he, he puts them in order of what he thinks they're going to do. And then he puts them in order of who, who yeah. the best players are. Um, okay. So if you look at KOC's big board, um, he's got Keegan Murray at pick number 27. So that's much lower than where the Warriors draft. He says the positives are he's got a good feel for the game. He's intelligent. He's a catch and shoot. So three and D kind of like what you were saying, you, you know, you're comfortable with him open in the corner. On ball defense and off ball defense. His minuses is, is the age, but that's not necessarily a problem for the Warriors. It's not a minus actually for the Warriors. A pro for the Warriors. Um, and he lacks a dynamic handle off the dribble. Good it's first step, me. doesn't have great speed or shake and bake move. So those are his minuses according to KOC. Yeah, trade down in front of the Kings. 
You'll get him. What if the Kings draft the Twins? That's what he. That, that's what every mock draft has him going to. Is really? The Kings. Yeah. Uh, 